Hey, hold it. What in the hell happened in this weekend? We're having a great weekend. There was some great racing, some great overtakes, some uh, heated action on the track. The Ferraris took the grid by storm and ran away with it, which was unexpected for me. Um, Lewis spun off. Stappen was easily beaten by Lando in terms of pace and the inevitable overtake. And then the steward had to go and ruin it all with something stupid, like a nonsensical decision. First off, though, the Ferraris. What a great weekend it was for them. Charles Leclerc now firmly set on trying to win the constructors, which is still doable, might I add. But after this weekend's race, you could argue that there's not much competition that can stop them winning the constructors either. The Branson horse looking very good on track and having pace not to just hold on to the top two spots, but also maintain and build gaps, which is quite impressed and happy for them, especially considering I am a Lewis fan and Ferrari finishing strong bowls well for them next year too. Speaking of Lewis, he did spin off and end up in the gravel trap this weekend. To which Toto is saying it's apparently 100% not his fault. Um, he was quick to defend Lewis on that. Not quite sure the reason behind it, but um, where Lewis spun off is where Russell spun off in quality, causing that yellow flag, which meant Max Verstappen couldn't go faster in qualifying, which I am not opposed to. I was quite happy when uh, Lando managed to keep it. So maybe the small grace they brought this weekend brought an upset to the bounce of the car, especially when you pick up a bit of tailwind. Um, apparently where we were spun off, there was a 40 kilometers per hour tailwind at the time. Either way, something is upsetting that car and the balance in it. Mercedes has been very hot and cold all year. And another disappointing result for one half in the garage. Lewis looked to be on a good strategy for a change as well. Go along into the race with a set of hards and then the faster tyre towards the end of the race looked like the favourable strategy. And like I say, it does make a change that he was on the favourable strategy. He made up a bunch of positions in the first corner from 17th to 12th. And he was set for a promising race. When you're on the hard tyres, making up positions is one of the hardest things to do. So the fact that he made up all those positions in the first corner thanks to somebody spinning. Can't remember who it was. I think it was Ocon. But that helped him massively. And like I say, he was set for a very promising race. But he then brought out the safety car, which ultimately played into George's hand, on the other side of the garage, and helped George seal a fantastic comeback from the pit lane start, finishing in sixth place. It was a great drive for him. The key thing to mention here is that the upgrade they put on George's car, they took off and put on Lewis's after George's crash. They put George on the old setup and the car looked a lot more solid. So whichever upgrade was on Lewis's car, which put him in the gravel trap, I think it's safe to say he needs more work. A lot more work. Um, you can't have the car being unsettled by a bit of tailwind. Because obviously end up in a gravel trap or worse. It was a solid weekend for what I used to call the bottom two as well. Williams and Haas had a great showing. William's pace being much stronger than the originally anticipated, finishing 10th and 16th. Personally, I think Albon was capable of finishing somewhat alongside where Carl Pinto finished, but nevertheless, it's an important point scoring position for them. Sort of symbolises the team's rise this season. They'll be scoring some important prize money at the end of the year as well, from the constructors points, and hopefully they use that to bring a solid car to the grid next year. The other half of what I used to call the bottom two finished 8th and 11th, that being Haas, which is far far better from them. I think a lot of this is down to the experienced drivers. Kevin Magnussen wasn't too happy about the strategy he was on though. Um, he thinks a better strategy could have been inside the top 10, and I tend to agree with that. But there's always ifs and buts. It's a bit pointless saying what could have been at the end of the race, because what could have been is not what is. Definitely something to remember and talk about going into the next race, but it's still a solid performance from them. They also spotted their American uh, livery, is that the right word, this weekend, which looked pretty sweet. 
Um, this weekend in Mexico, I think they're playing homage to the upcoming release of the new Venom film. While we're on the you know, subject of playing homage, Fernando Alonso will be wearing a special lid this weekend to honour his milestone of career appearances in the driver's seat. If I remember rightly, it's 300 Grand Prix starts. I think. I'm not 100%. I'd have to double check on that, but I think that's correct. It's a very nice helmet too. Almost like the film strips, which is a very suit into Aston Martin. Links to the film industry, which of course they got a long lasting James Bond films. On the subject of Aston Martin though, seriously underperforming mid-pack team in my eyes. And I say that because of the amount of money that's been poured into that team and they're still yet again finishing no higher than 13. Not a remarkable weekend for them. Fernando will be hoping for a better result this weekend in Mexico to celebrate his milestone. I bet Lawrence didn't think his team would be underperforming after how much money he's put into Aston Martin. But what's a few more quid to seal on the greatest aerodynamicist of all time, Adrian Newey? I'm sure when he joins the team, the work he'll put in will rise and through the standings very soon anyway. It was a mixed weekend. Most of the action happening up front, so let's talk about it. The ugly, inconsistent, bizarre, strange, unjust, nonsensical, possibly corrupt to FIA. Firstly though, let's go all the way back to Thursday when the weekend began. I'm going to talk about the apparent cheating on Red Bull's car. And I say cheating with quotations. So at the forefront of the weekend, yet another device was discovered on the Red Bull car, a device which is supposed to be standard from the FIA, not something that can be changed at all. Such as the fuel filter, for example, um, when Ferrari were caught messing with uh, fuel, I think it was a fuel filter, or the fuel delivery device, the FIA introduced their own, which is now non-tamper proof. You can't change it at all. But like I say, it's all began on Thursday. Red Bull released a statement, but they confirmed on Thursday they agreed a plan with the FIA to make alterations to their car following talks with the sports governing body. Now that was a statement from them. The alterations have not been confirmed nor mentioned at all. So we don't know what state the device was in before these changes. Um, by the way, the device I'm talking about is on the screen right now for a, if anybody's unsure what I mean. Like I say, the statement from them was they have agreed a plan with the FIA to make alterations to their car following talks with the sports governing body. And that's strange in itself because that statement suggests that something has been found and when they're making alterations due to talks with the governing body, it would suggest that whatever has been found is not legal and they're having to change it. But, like I say, because this was released on Thursday before any of the cars are in the spotlight of the cameras, we don't know what's been changed and we don't know the state of it before. Um... The theory is that it changed it in such a way that it enables them to change the ride height of the car while the car is in Park Fermi. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, Park Fermi is a term used to basically say the car's setup cannot be changed. Um, and this is any time in qualifying all the way up to the race. You can only make small adjustments like front wing adjustments. So if they found a way to adjust the car's ride height, this would make the car illegal yet again. And I say yet again because they were also the ones suspected of using the asymmetric braking system, which the FIA didn't release which team it was, but since it was banned, the Red Bull lost a chunk of pace. Um, you would want to change the car's ride height from qualifying to the race, because in qualifying you would run it lower for a one lap attempt at the fastest lap, and then in the race you would typically run a bit higher to support the heavier fuel load and things like that if you run it at the same height as in qualifying, the heavier fuel load means your plank is going to scrape across the floor more and it's then going to be illegal when they check the plank at the end of the race. 
But, like I say, the key thing here is that Red Bull are saying the alterations were made on Thursday after talks with the sports governing body. The picture is from Friday. So what we're looking at there could be the changed product. It might not even be the product of what is the cheating device. Um, I seriously don't understand why Red Bull keep having illegal parts found on their car and the chance to change it. The big controversy here is what I mentioned at the start. The Pacific part is supposed to be standard from the FIA, not a part to be tampered with or changed. And the key statement itself, as I mentioned, Red Bull confirmed, agreed the plan with the FIA to make alterations to the car. It was on TV showing that the FIA was at the car and inspecting it, but this was after the changes were made to the car. For all we know, they could be inspecting that the new part is installed correctly, the new non-tampered part. So, like I say, that picture that we said, see there could be the changed version and now the legal version. Um, this does mean the FIA found something they weren't happy with and have allowed Red Bull to change it with no follow up penalty for infringing the rules. And this is why the reason that the other team principals are so annoyed. I feel a big part of the issue here is communication. Um, there's a lot of mix up between what people are deeming to be illegal and not illegal and the images being shown on Friday, I think it was, or Saturday before qualifying at the FIA inspecting the car while the mechanics work on it, is where I believe the communication error is. They could be inspecting the new part being installed correctly. And if that's true, a lot of people have taken that to be the FIA inspecting the original part, and that's not the case because, remember, the statement says that they changed it on Thursday. So this is why a lot of the other team principals are so annoyed. It's clear in the rules that to change that specific part is a breach of the rules. And yet Red Bull were found to have changed it and got away with no penalty for breaking the rules. Um, Zach Brown and Total Wolf are in disbelief as to why the FIA is so lacking when it comes to dealing with Red Bull. This is a big issue. It's not the first time it's happened and it's not the second time it's happened. FIA consistently are lacking when it comes to Red Bull and things like this where if they have been changing ride height with this device that gives them a huge advantage and could also explain why they were quicker in qualifying than what we've seen their paces in the race. But I don't understand why the FIA are so lenient to Red Bull. The only efficient, official statement from the FIA regarding this is that they said the use of any such device under part Fermi conditions would be against regulations and that it was altering its procedures from Austin to make sure no such systems were being used, which is infuriating in itself. In, it, in that statement in itself, it leads to believe that, yet again, such as the asymmetric braking event, where they then said such devices, we are changing the rules to make sure these can't be used from there on, and Red Bull lost a lot of pace and were not penalised or anything like that. It leads to believe that they've allowed a team to have used the device, they've caught them using it, and then let them change it and then change the rules to make sure it doesn't happen again while not punishing said team and it shatters any and all integrity that the FIA hope to have. Every other team should think of a way to cheat because the FIA is setting a standard where if they find it, they will not punish you, they will allow you to remove it and then change the rules. Or will they? Because the craziness didn't stop there, did it? Which is where we come to the race. Yet again, the FIA made a mockery of themselves by showing bias towards one specific team. You guessed it, Red Bull. 
the big talking point from the weekend, which in the bigger picture a lot of people have overlooked, helps Max seal the championship yet again. So let's go and start with towards the beginning of the race, um, where the FIA deemed Russell had forced Bottas wide and he received a five second penalty for such things, which was a quick decision, might I add. We're seeing this a lot lately where some teams are very lacking in choosing penalties and then sometimes they're very quick to choose penalties. In my eyes, looking at the Russell and Bottas um, situation as a whole, if you overtake around the outside, you have to expect to get pushed wide. It's what happens in karting. You know yourself where track limits are. You expect it when you try and overtake around the outside. If I'm coming up to overtake someone who constantly is defending the inside line and I put my car on the outside line, I am expecting to see barriers very, very soon. And I wouldn't go screaming to the steward that he deserves a five second penalty for pushing me wide. I'd just be like, right, well, I put my car there. Next lap, let's try and dummy him or think of something. Russell got a five second penalty for apparently pushing Bottas off track. Whether it's right or wrong, let's not get into the details of that, but I will say Russell was still on track and Bottas was just off the track. Now, let's cut to Max and Lando's situation. Um, it's a very messy situation. I put a picture on screen for those wondering about the point I'm about to make here. Um, and while we're at it, Look at how far Max is off track there. Let me talk you through what's going to happen, what happened at this situation. Coming into the corner, Lando had the fast car already. He late brake and goes to overtake around the outside. The key thing here is Max has done what he always does. He brakes, but not enough to make the apex. So not enough to sort the car down and make the apex of the corner. He's braked just enough to force Lando wide, and to do so, he's gone off track himself, meaning he's not in control of his own car either at the time. Now, the key thing is he's not attempted the corner. He's met the apex of the corner to a point, but that's not his main concern. His main concern is pushing his rival off track to keep the position, which is Max's defence style altogether. Following the previous example, you would expect a penalty here for a couple of reasons, but you'd expect Max to be getting the penalty. As you see on the picture, he's forced Lando wide. He's forced him a lot wider than what Bottas was forced wide. Um, he's gone off track himself for not being in control of his own car because he's not braked enough to meet the apex of the corner. So if you followed the previous example, you'd expect Max to get a penalty for, for these reasons. Um, Lando definitely had to go wide which is the difference here um max not attempting the apex of the corner and forcing norris wide means that he had to avoid a collision if wando would have attempted the corner still max would have crashed into him because max was in control of his own car because he left his braking so late because he was more focused on norris means that he would never have attempted the corner and he had no chance of staying on track. So after all this, you would expect Max to get the penalty. And that's just from following the example that the stewards had set earlier in the race. Russell got a five second penalty for forcing Bottas off track. Max should get a five second penalty for forcing Wando off track, right? No. Wando was the one that actually got the penalty. And they said it was for leaving the track and gaining an advantage. Which is ridiculous. How on earth are you supposed to stay on, stay on track when Max himself has gone so far wide that if Wando had tried to stay on track, Max would have still gone off track. And then Max would have gained an advantage either way because Wando would be behind him and Max would have just pointed the throttle and left him. Max is so far off track, he's further than Russell and Bottas was. But the penalty from the FIA meant that he was gifted third place, which meant obviously he gets the podium position, 
and Arsenal now extends his lead on the championship yet again. And you can safely say now it's Max's championship to lose. And it's not going to be the cleanest title it's earned all season. There's no argument about that. But it's decisions like this that are constantly ruining the sport. I don't understand why the FIA are so inconsistent in their decision making. They have clear rules to help them make decisions clearer. <coughs> Excuse me. Martin Brundle made a good point that there's a good six pages of rules that are there basically to dissuade overtaking. And he's completely right in what he says. Decisions like this are ruining the sport. The rules should be track limits and a white line. That's it. Simple as that. Both cars went off, so in respect, get a warning for track limits. And that's it. If they picked up warnings previously, I think it's free warnings and any more after that, it's a five second penalty. Which gives you free chances, that's, you can't stay fair than that. Let's say Orlando got free warnings before. He tried the overtake round the outside, Max pushed him wide. Whether or not it's fair or not, Max and Orlando both get a warning for track limits. Orlando's had three already, both won five second penalty. That would be fair, you can't argue against that. Even if Max pushed him wide, He's gone wide himself. It's a warning. That's how it should be. The racing should be left on track. There shouldn't be six pages of rules to dissuade overtaking. There shouldn't be a set of rules set up in a way that the driver knows how to use those rules as an advantage just to push his opponent out wide so that they get a penalty. Jensen Button made this point to Christian Horner in saying that your driver knows these rules very well and knows how to drive in such a way that the other person who's trying to fight for him and trying to gain the position, he can just push them wide and the other person gets a five second penalty. It's stupid. At least if you stay to track limits it's fair and there's no arguing in it. Track limits is track limits. But even that seemed to change the, the Texas race which I don't understand. The white line should be the track limits. I think it was last year when we said this, white line on every track was track limits. And I was like, it was a breath of fresh air. It was very, not calm in a sense, but it was very relieving to know that cars going over the white line, that's track limits. Remember when the safety car had to go out on track and show us what track limits was? But yet, yeah, they painted a blue line at this track to help us understand where track limits was. We don't need a blue line, we have a white line. If they keep it as track limits, is track limits, the rest gets sorted on track. But let's say the incident would have happened with the white line just being track limits. Both Max and Wando get a five second penalty. Or maybe not even that, if they've not gone over track limits before, they both get a warning for track limits and the race goes on from there. Max just has to suck it up that he's lost a place and carry on. If he's quick enough, he can overtake Lando, right? But he's obviously not because Lando was gaining on him seconds a lap. So it's not even about that Max was quick. It's not even about that Max was defending amazingly. At first he was. At first he was pulling off some great defensive moves. He put his car in a perfect position. He was in the middle of the track through some corners, so Lando couldn't gain an advantage. And there's nothing wrong with that. But then it started to get mud muddy. And it started to get very murky. And then the FIA stepped in. There was also some people calling for a penalty for Lando's late move in breaking into turn one. And I think you are grasping at straws there. It was, it looked... Um, very late on the cameras but at that point in the corner if Max is trying to overtake there he's going straight into the side of Lando there's no way Max is going to throw one on down the inside there but we definitely need a revision in the rules that stops such moves as Max outbreaking himself not even attempting corners on the track to push his opponent out wide, missing the apex himself and going off track himself to where his opponent then gets a five second penalty. 
We have clear rules like track limits being track limits. It'll cut out a lot of crying down the radio to the FIA. I don't understand why this happens anyway. We have grown men racing on track crying to stewards down a radio. I get this frustration. I feel frustration when I'm go-karting and they're not even the same sport. I do 1% of the speeds they do. It's just the adrenaline. Mind you, they can't even seem to get any decisions right. They can't even make their own rules clear when it comes to how the car should be built. So, the fact that there's six pages of rules on how overtaking should be done shows how far gone the FIA is. Um, they're that far gone, I don't even think they know which side of the line they stand on. Never mind track limits. They definitely need a shake-up. In the days of Charlie Whiting, we never had these issues. In the days of Charlie Whiting, we never had ages to wait until a safety car came out. Lewis Hamilton, in the race on lap two, spun out in the gravel trap. We all know that car is going nowhere, and yet it was nearly three quarters of a lap later before the safety car came out. That car is beached. He was in 12th. There's still another five, six, seven, eight cars to come through yet, and he's beached there, and they're under the risk of another car coming straight into the back of him. That safety car should have been out as soon as you realise that car's beached. We've seen this time and time again where they struggle to get calls right. We had Russell on his roof and it took them ages to get a red flag out. I understand that it was a bit comical Russell, Russell shouting over the radio but he was on his roof, he had cars racing past him. Also, in the days of Charlie White and we never had a mix up in the rules like we have now. If there was asymmetric braking found on the car back in the days of the good FIA, there would have been penalties handed out straight away and there wouldn't have been any cloudiness as to which team was using it. They would have said such and such a team was using it. It's now been banned. They've been given a penalty. That's how it should be. If you breach the rules, you get a penalty. I don't understand why it's so difficult for the FIA to grasp their own rules. And it's decisions like these that time and time again make the argument stronger for not that just the FIA being biased, but corruption in the sport. At least when Mercedes were dominating, you couldn't argue that the FIA were corrupt because any time that they could give a penalty to Lewis or Mercedes, they were more than happy to do it. Especially when Red Bull were complaining to them every race saying the rear wing is illegal. And let's not forget Brazil, when Max Verstappen broke the Mercedes rear wing or did something to it, I can't remember exactly what it was now. But in Park Ferme, Verstappen was seen breaking the Mercedes rear wing. He got a monetary fine and they had Lewis Hamilton got disqualified for that rear wing infringement in the sprint race. Let's not forget that thanks to the complaints of Red Bull, a brand new test was invented to test a Mercedes rear wing that had never been done before and it was only invented for their car and no other car was tested that weekend on this new rear wing test that the FIA created based on the Red Bull complaints. And that was in 2021. How long has this been going on for? How many championships have been tainted? The 2021 championship has been tainted, you can easily argue that, from the rule change that happened in the last couple of laps to give Verstappen the championship. And that's no argument about it. The rules were clearly changed on the fly. So much so that later on in the year, Michael Massey was demoted, you could argue, but he was definitely sacked. And he was sent to Australian V8 racing for human error, they called it. He lost his job for human error, and that human error was changing those race rules in the later parts of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, which gifted Max Verstappen the race. Some people have said, is Michael Massey back? That's how bad it's getting. And it was only a small thing this weekend. It was only a small rule infringement that 
has triggered all this? Or is the inconsistency from the FIA in their own rulemaking which is causing so much confusion? Like I say, we had the Bottas and the Russell incident, which was, you could argue, was a mirror reflection of the Max and Wando incident. Max, ever since he started doing these moves and the racing style he has, should have been penalised from the start. I think Fred Vasseur said this, or it might have been the McLaren CEO. But he said if it had been nipped in the bud as soon as this driving style had developed, we wouldn't have these issues that we have today. And he made the point of the dive bombing on Lewis Hamilton and how different Max drove with Lewis. It seems to be whichever title contender is fighting with Max, he drives very differently to that person. But it's too late now. He has that driving style. He's developed that style and Unfortunately, this is the Max we have. Unfortunately, this is the FIA we have. Unfortunately, this is the Red Bull we have. Speaking of Max as well, um, apparently he's looking to get out of his contract early. There's a clause in his contract that if they do not give him a competitive car, he can end his contract early. That was gossiped for next year. Oh, if by the end of next year he's not in a competitive car, he's looking to activate that clause and leave Red Bull for another team that will be competitive. That says to me that they are very worried about where they are. They're obviously looking at devices on the car to give them an edge. They've changed that little T piece on the front wing, or just behind the front wing rather. They were suspected of using the asymmetric braking system, which. Is rumoured to have been in from the beginning of the year, which is why they were so dominant at the start, and now they're struggling to even get fourth place. It's a very mucky situation at the moment, but that's next year. It, well, I mean, it says a lot that they're looking ahead to next year, but in the more closer future, we have Mexico this weekend, which is a very interesting track. Very tight in places, but it's also quite a fast speed track. I reckon the Ferraris are going to be quick again this weekend. Um, they were unexpected to quick for me this weekend. I didn't expect them to dominate so well. But I think Mexico will favour Ferrari. Red Bull could struggle. Uh, it's Sergio Perez's home race. I think with it being his own race, they might give him a fresh engine or they might uh, try and put him a little bit further up the field. But it is a very likely track for a safety car. Um, thanks to Lewis Hamilton, we saw Bert Mylander for the first time, and I think it was 12 races, maybe. I think we could see him again this weekend. Um, possibly in a crash situation, but I don't see Mercedes doing well. Unless they take the old grade off, it's not really a track that's going to suit them. Um, the star will be interesting, though. This is a great track for a start. That long straight. This is the kind of track where it does not help you being in pole position. As soon as it gets off, you've got second or third that will tuck in behind pole position and go all the way up in the slipstreams of the first corner. So whoever gets pole position is going to struggle to keep it. Speaking of which, Lando Norris, did he not do his homework? I was infuriated when I saw the first lap. Max did what he always does and dived to the inside and just easily took the first place. He did the exact same last season, or there was a season, possibly 2021 as well, when he was against Lewis. He just dived straight to the inside. Kota has the biggest turn one entry I've ever seen. Lando needed to be all the way into the inside edge to defend. For me, he lost that race as soon as he lost P as soon as he lost P1 on the first corner. I think he would have struggled to keep the Ferraris behind him, but. Max had no business overtaking him into turn one. He should have done much better. I feel he was lucky to keep P1. Max was on a flyer in qualifying, which I also don't get. I don't get how they can be so quick in qualifying, and yet the pace just loses them in the race. 
which again, if they were using something in, to adjust their ride height between qualifying and the race, they might add up. So I reckon we're going to see possibly Lando Norris P1, Charles Leclerc third, our science second, Max fourth, Lewis fifth. I reckon that's what we're going to see in qualifying, but in the race, I think it's going to be much, much different. I think Ferrari is going to dominate again. And we could see another one too from Ferrari as they look to focus on securing the Constructors' Championship, which is well within their grasp. They need one, two finishes as much as they can get, and there's five races left, so they definitely can uh, seal their Constructors, especially if McLaren keep having difficult days like they're having. The Astri needed to do better as well to help secure that Constructors' Championship, but we'll see how it goes. There's uh, still a few races left, but the season could be exciting depending on how Mexico goes. If Max gets another advantage like that and manages to pull out another lead on Wando Norris, then the championship is his and it's not going to be exciting at the end of the season. So Mexico is going to be crucial for that. If Wando finishes ahead or if Max gets a DNF, the championship is blown wide open. So this weekend is critical and it could be a very pivotal moment in the championship. Until then though, let's see what happens. <laughs>